Hey guys, hope you guys are doing well. I know it's been a while. I've just been busy at home, um, being with the family. Um, but today I wanted to quickly get on here and uh, talk about a very important topic. Um, and um, it's the topic of hyper grace. And I see this uh, plaguing the church and it is a dangerous uh, movement. Um, and it's not just in one denomination, it's uh, all across the board. Um, and uh, I know this all too well because when I was saved in 2013, I was saved into the charismatic movement. And within that, there are several different streams. And one of the streams is the hyper grace movement. I spent an adequate amount of time in all of those different streams. So uh, I know what they teach and what they're about. And uh, it's dangerous, okay? Um, and... You know, and, and this also goes along with uh, work salvationists um, or, you know, there are people that, that label uh, an, a people who are not in the hyper grace movement uh, as work salvationists or Pharisees or legalists, all kinds of different names. And, um, and I want to make a separate video on that. But today this video is for the hyper grace um, and and I will also make a separate video on the charismatic movement and the dangers of it. Um, but today this is for the hyper grace. Um, so, you know, so before we talk about hyper grace, what is grace? Grace is Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says that the word became flesh and he made his dwelling among us. We have seen the glory and the glory of uh, the one and only who came from the father uh, full of grace and truth so the person of grace and truth is the person of jesus christ and 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 my goodness like i, I would not be here without the grace of god finding me and rescuing me from the pits of hell uh, from my lost sinful self that was destructive and um, john 1 16 says from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace for the law was given to moses grace and truth came through jesus christ and uh, that's an amazing truth right there. And like Paul, I have to say that I do not take the grace, frustrate the grace of God. Uh, because it is the best thing that's happened to me. And like him, I have to say, for if righteousness came through the law, meaning the law of Moses, um, then Christ died in vain. And that's Galatians 2.21. Um, <clears throat> but we know it didn't come through the 613 Jewish laws. It didn't come through ceremonial laws. Uh, it didn't come through any of that. But it came through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, who came to seek and save the lost. And uh, for, to, for uh, so that we might find forgiveness for our sins and we can turn and uh, amend our ways, right? But today we have a new problem, you know. Uh, the, the problem is they have taken the grace and they have eliminated a, a large portion of the Bible. Even in the New Testament, they eliminated and they selectively pick out certain uh, portions of what Paul wrote and have made it into a, an exaggerated doctrine, uh, even eliminating some of the warnings and things that he teaches. Uh, and um, they have really um, made a different, made a different uh, doctrine out of it altogether. Uh, and that's why the Bible says that in the last days, uh, many will be tossed to and fro by every wind of wave of doctrine. Um, and um, people will not be okay with listening to sound doctrine. And they will follow after itching ears, you know, and being led astray. Um, so the book of Jude specifically talks against these kind of people. Okay, it says, for certain men... Ungodly men have crept into our churches whose condemnation have been written long ago and who twist the grace of God as a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. And they have followed the ways of Cain and they have rushed for profit like Bal Balaam's error and they have been destroyed by, uh, like Korah's rebellion. So if you know about Cain, I don't want to go too deep into all these topics. Uh, Cain, Cain was a lover of self, and he did not bring his first fruits to the Lord like his brother Abel did. And um, God was not pleased with the sacrifice, and he ends up murdering his brother and um, and then lying about it to God. And um, and Balaam, Balaam, um, Balaam was a prophet in the old uh, was a prophet, 
and he was a wicked prophet. Uh, but there was a king called uh, Balak, and uh, he used Balaam uh, to curse the nation of Israel. But Balaam didn't fall for it, and um, but eventually he did. He didn't want to curse because God kept interrupting them, and um, he did not uh, cur uh, curse Israel like the king Balak wanted him to do it three times. And instead, he blessed them because that's the word of the Lord that put, uh, was put into his mouth. Uh, but in the end, he found out another way to uh, destroy the people of Israelite is by telling the king Balak to send Midianite, Midianite women or Moabite women, which are, you know, uh, the Moabites were a pagan country and they worship idols and false gods and um, did all kinds of sexual immorality. And uh, Balaam sent um, Balak to send uh, the people of Israel um, women uh, for them to commit sexual immorality with and in such they fell under a curse and so this is what Satan does okay if Satan can destroy you outright directly he comes in through the back door he has his back door approach and uh, he joins forces with the church okay and then he starts deviating them off off the right narrow path into destruction and um, coming under judgment and that's what we see today with the prosperity movement, with the hyper grace movement, um, with the charismatic science and wonders movement. Um, a lot of a lot of stuff is going on. The Catholic Church, Orthodox, all of it. Okay, and uh, we have to be aware and wise, like Paul said. So that's why I wanted to uh, talk about this. And uh, all right, so let, let me go into a few things that um, they say. But I want to compare it with scripture, okay? Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that God does is, you know, God, even in my life, um, you know, certain disappointments came and uh, God will use that uh, part where the devil hits you. And during that exact same time, God will use that situation to prune you. So you don't know which one is which. And um, and it takes a while. It takes, a time. it takes some time before you actually figure uh like you know process it and come to the truth years later so what is uh hyper grace it's a doctrine so close to universalism in some streams uh and um and you know they use certain scriptures like you know the scriptures that i quoted earlier about grace upon grace and they say things like you don't need to confess your sin because it is finished um but that is wrong you know you, um because the bible in Proverbs 28, 13, it says, But he who covers the sin will not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces it will find mercy. And uh, 1 John 1, 9, it also says that if we confess our sins, and he's faithful and just to uh, forgive, forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Um, <clears throat> and, um, and, you have to, and another thing they say is you have to do nothing because Christ has done it all. Right? And... and Part of it is true because Christ has won the victory for us on the cross. He uh, brought the principalities and Satan. He destroyed the powers and everything, right? But uh, but God has also entrusted us to, um, you know, in Matthew 28, uh, it, or it says, you know, and Jesus came to them and he says, all other power and authority has given to me and and with this, I, I tell you to go and make disciples of all nations, um, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. So, so Jesus wants us to be his disciples and obey his teachings. Okay, but one of the things that the hyper grace movement says that you don't have to do anything because Christ has done it all. And uh, that's false. Number three, okay, Holy Spirit will only, one of the things they say is Holy Spirit will only convict you of your righteousness. And that's not, I see, like, the way the devil works is, you know, he works in partial truth. You know, the way the devil works is sins by uh, omission, uh, like lies by omission or uh, lies by, um, I forget what, what, he, what he said, but lies that are said directly. <sighs> So Holy Spirit will convict, uh, they say Holy Spirit will only convict you of your righteousness. But the Bible says that when he comes, he will convict the world of sin, 
judgment and righteousness. And um, so that's half truth. Okay. So the next thing they say is the fear of the Lord uh, and reverence. The fear of the Lord is just like you're in awe of God and you're you have to have reverence for God. Uh, but it's not necessarily the fear of the Lord like um, the the people of the Old Testament did. Okay, walked in. Uh, the fear of the Lord looks like uh, obedience. Okay, God tells Abraham to go lay down his only only son on the altar, and when God uh, when Abraham went to go do it, uh, even though he didn't want to, he went to obey God. God looked at him and said, "Abraham truly fears God." And that's exactly where God wants us at, okay? Um, and uh, the next thing they say is, uh, Jesus Christ represents the fullness of God. Uh, you will never see anything in God that uh, Jesus did not do while he was on the earth. Maybe it was in God that flooded the earth, you know? They'll, they'll even say things like that, you know? Uh, that if you can't see anything apart from the love and grace in Jesus Christ, uh, that... that um, the, the person of Jesus Christ in the New Testament is the person different from the God of the Old Testament. And they try to deconstruct everything and uh, bring it to nothing. Um, another thing is, um, <clears throat> this happens only in the charismatic hypergrace movement where there is something called uh, Christocentric universalism. And it's the closest thing to universalism, but um, they, they don't want to be honest about it. Okay. So it's it's universalism masquerading as Christianity. And uh, number seven, okay, uh, the there uh, the, the thing about the uh, hyper grace movement is that uh, it brings Jesus down to a human level, uh, and and they forget the whole aspect that he is Lord, uh, he is Master, okay. Um, and they just focus on the humanity of Jesus Christ. And it's a very humanistic, turns into a humanistic gospel. Um, they focus on the life of Jesus on the earth while ignoring his divinity uh, when he was in heaven. And uh, the way Solomon said it best is um, right before he died, he said, fear God and keep his commandments. And Jesus also, he had to say a lot about it. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord? Uh, and not do uh, the things I say. You know, why do you call me, Lord? Hypergrace brings God down to a, a very, very humanistic level and creates no room for reverence or awe. 